Welcome to Accelerated Mixed Martial Arts Training, Strategies, Tactics, and Techniques Tips for the Week for MMA. I'm Rich Alton, and today's video tutorial is going to cover how do you properly increase your power so your MMA striking techniques improve. And more importantly, I'm going to show you why you need to use resistance bands if you're going to properly execute the right training methods so you have a discernible increase in your power and overall performance. Okay, this video is going to talk about why you need to use resistance bands if you're going to properly train to develop the specific strength that is needed in order to develop more power so you improve on your overall mixed martial arts striking techniques. Now this video is going to be a continuation from my recent video which I'll leave a link in the description below. And the last tutorial I did was answering a question that I got on my Facebook or social media platforms was and the question was is how do you train specifically to develop more power so my striking techniques improve and what exercises can you do in order to achieve that goal and then when I proceeded to answer that question the question that I got uh, before I got to answer the question was, what barbell lifts specifically can you use to increase your power so your techniques improve? And so what I wanna share with you before I get into today's tutorial about why you need to use bands, I wanna kinda of give you a reminder or a review is that the, the answer to the answer to question, uh, answering the question about the barbell lifts is, I gave five reasons that what, why the barbell lifts, the classical barbell lifts, your Olympic lifts, your power lifts, can never do for you that can carry over to your martial arts performance. And the primary reason why they can't carry over to your performance is they don't create a, uh, any type of movement that would resemble any striking skill sets, whether it's punching or kicking. Okay, and the reason for that, they can't help you, uh, they don't resemble those movements because all barbell lifts train on the sagittal plane in this plane of motion here and they're always done in a bilateral position, meaning both arms and both legs and both hips are being used simultaneously in the same direction, all right? And barbell lifts have nothing to do with using the core oblique systems to create a slinging effect or a contralateral reciprocation, which is what human move, all human movement is designed to do from the dawn of time. And there's nothing that you do in the real world that you do not use your core systems in conjunction with your extremities. There's nothing that you do, no sport, no nothing. From the, day, the moment you wake up in the morning to the time you go to sleep, there's nothing that you do not do in an everyday task where you're just moving your shoulder in isolation or just moving your hip in isolation. Everything has to work with the body's gait cycle in here and it has to start from the core systems branching out to the extremities, all right? Now, the other thing that the barbell lift can never do, it never can, it never can train you, your muscles to properly move through the gait cycle to propel you through the air. The body was meant to locomote through the air, to run, to jump, to throw, to climb, to crawl. Okay, it was not designed to stand, sit here in a bilateral position and hop like bunny rabbits. All right? So these are the things I mentioned in the previous video that you may want to check out first and foremost. Now let me give you some assets, what the, the barbell lifts can do for you. What they can do for you, and this is a fact, it's been proven for hundreds and hundreds of years, is they can increase your strength. Okay, they can, they can improve your overall strength, all right, because of the position of the barbell, because it's on the sagittal plane in here, the barbell is always close to the center of gravity. And that's why human beings and powerlifting and Olympic lifting can handle the most weights there because the body is closer to support all that weight. Okay, that's pretty much its primary advantage of all barbell lifts is it can produce your strength. But the question is, does that does that type of strength and those motor patterns that you're doing going into flexion extension in here like this and separating the upper body and the lower body out from its core system to, to move in its natural habitat, does that, that, does that strength that you're producing over a, period, a, a period of time and those motor patterns in here that your body's memorizing, does that transfer over to better performance in, in, into your striking? And the answer is no, it does not. If you train in the barbell lifts all the time, primarily using the classical lifts, you eventually will come hit a, a roadblock. You will start to slow down. 
That's why baseball pitchers and, and shot putters and back in overseas training, if you look at all that, all, all those facts and stuff, all those, all those athletes, when they started training in the Olympic weightlifting style back then overseas, because they didn't have powerlifting, they all slowed down, they all had injuries because of the nature of just the nature of putting the arm over the head in here, and the list goes on and on. Just it does not resemble any kind of movement pattern that you would do in your sport. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about why you need to use resistance bands and the, the, spe and the specific strengths, strengths that you need to train for and why and the specific strengths that the bands, resistance bands can help you do and how to set up that stuff properly. Okay, the type of strength that you need to develop in order to increase your power for your striking techniques is called explosive strength, which is also known as speed strength. And that type of strength is defined as the steepest increase in force in the shortest possible time frame. And it has to start from a concentric position. So from a punching position or a shot putting position in here like this or loaded in here like a baseball bat, okay? And the reason why the bands can help you dramatically increase your, that type of strength, your explosive strength in here, is because of the nature of the elasticity in the bands, okay? If I take some just basic resistance bands that's strapped to the wall here, all right, the, na the, the nature of the uh, stretch reflex in here that the bands produce, as I start to stretch the bands out, the, the more resistance that's coming back in the opposite direction, the opposing direction. So there, I'm throwing this punch out here like this on the horizontal plane, and therefore the bands, because they're rigged directly right behind my posterior chain, which are gonna be my stabilization muscles in here, the resistance is directly following the same path as the punch, the same power line in here like that. Okay, so I don't have to, I'm not dealing with forces vertical in here like so, like you would do if you were in a classical barbell lift. So the major advantage of training with the bands is that I have to overcome what is called deceleration here. Okay, starting from a concentric position, I have to snap the punch out here like this and bring it right back. And as I bring it back, before, it's, before it gets out of control, I have to stabilize against it, and when I bring it back and stop it right here, that would be called the amortization phase of, of, of a movement, okay? So I'm in the concentric phase, I go to the eccentric phase in here like so, and then as I come back for repetition, repetition number two, I have to reverse out of this like this, so the bands as they pull back in here, are causing me, causing my nervous system, my brain to go, no, I have to power right through this here again like this. Okay, same thing in, in, in if you were to do a, a jump, you know, a, a squat jump. You start, you know, in the eccentric position here, you drop down to the concentric position, and the difference between right in the middle there like that is the amortization phase. So for you to reverse out of the concentric, okay, and propel forward in here, you have to come out of this amortization phase as fast as possible. If you sit down here like this, you are basically losing all the kinetic force, your body is starting to fatigue. And so the band, the band, when the band comes back in here like this, and, and this force channel straight back is going into my body, it's turning into kinetic energy, which allows me to turn it into reversal strength like that. Then that's simply why the bands offer that type of uh, resistance and why they can help you increase your power, why you need to use the bands more in, more in your MMA training if you really want to increase your power and your striking in a proper way. All right? Now, if we took the same idea with a dumbbell, and I've seen a lot of people people do this, and I think I started out like this too. Let's say I hold the dumbbell right here, and the same, same idea with the band, and I try to snap the dumbbell out here like this. Well, I'm, I got some resistance, yes, but the resistance is pretty much in my rotator cuff, and it's going in a vertical fashion here. And as I more I start to, so I have to overcome the force, not only up and down, but I have to tell myself to 
extend this dumbbell out here. And as the dumbbell gets further from my body, okay, if, it's, if it starts to go more in the eccentric phase, it starts to slow down. Because what's happening is, is now that my shoulder is rotator cuff muscles are, are, the, are the primary primary muscle in, in fact, in the fact here like this, that's causing my arm to drop down here like this. So not only does my form start to change, especially if I start using heavier dumbbells, or if it's kettlebells or whatever you're using in here, but not only that, but I start, I don't have the same force pulling backwards like the bands do. So weights only, you only can deal with gravity. You can't deal with this, you can't do the stretch reflex. And there's no dynamic sport that you're doing that doesn't have a stretch reflex. Boxing, wrestling, throwing a shot put, a discus thrower, jumping, etc. Okay? Now the other thing that the bands are allowing you to do that the weights, especially barbells, are not going to allow you to do is because depending on how you rig this thing, <clears throat> so you have to you have to rig the bands for every specific punch. That's one of the downfalls. So we're just talking about a straight punch in here. I gotta put it on this, I gotta put it on this plane of motion in here like this. If I try to throw a hook punch from here, that's not going to work. I have to turn my body in here. So if I throw a hook punch like this, the force has to be going in the opposite direction in here like this. So you're gonna have to rig the bands uh, according to each technique that you're doing. But this is just a generic way to tell, you know, kind of to demonstrate, you know, how the bands work as opposed to using barbells, right? So, when, so again, with the bands, one of the advantages of the bands and the dumbbells, you know, if you're using a dumbbell or something, can give you or regular weights is it, it causes, as the stretch reflex happening here, it's putting a tremendous load on my oblique slings. Okay, and I explained this earlier before that the oblique slings have to be involved. Every movement that you do in punching in here has to incorporate the transverse abdominals and it has to connect the oblique slings which connect to your extremities which sling the body like this. Okay, so the, the bands, training with the bands like this in the same direction that the punch is occurring on create a reciprocating effect in here like this, create a, a contralateral slinging effect in here like this, okay? And it's, it's, it's teaching you to connect the gait cycle in here that the human body uses and everything it does in here like this. I right? know there's no movement that you do in the real world that you just use your arm, again, or you just use your leg or something like this, right? You turn in here, your body slings. You go to pick something up in here, there's contralateral reciprocation happening in here like this, okay? Now, you can't do that with the dumbbells or a barbell. So when people are, are sitting there doing like one arm snatches like this or using the barbell to clean and jerk, okay, all that all that technique that you're doing and all that position has nothing to do with slinging weight, full, slinging your body forward like this, creating that stretch reflex, teaching you to locomote very fast in here. It doesn't do any of that stuff. And the other thing it's not doing either is it doesn't train your, your trunk in connection with your extremities how you would actually go into extension. So doing weights overhead like this, this is shoulder flexion, this is extension. And striking's happening out here in extension for the most part, okay? So now using the bands when you are, I'm gonna say this for another video, but depending upon how strong you are, your relative strength, will you kind of determine how much, how much band resistance can you use? I know that's going to be a next question. How much band resistance is going to use? Well, unless you have you know how to do the mathematical calculation, your body weight, you know, times a certain percentage, or maybe you know the amount of tension in the bands, you know, as they stretch out a certain amount of inches, which is going to be a pain in the butt to find out. You have to kind of go by feel. And one of the ways to do it here is, in order for you to produce force, you have to have some kind of resistance. Okay. So if you use too light of a band in here, you can't produce any force. Just like if you try to take a wiffle ball, 
Take a wiffle ball and try to throw it at a window. You're never going to break the window because there's not enough mass behind the ball to actually create force. Okay. And now the other the other thing is true too. If you have too much resistance on the bands in here, you might be trying to trying to you might be starting out so slow where you're really not getting to maximum acceleration. Remember, the speed strength, the explosive strength, is trying to create the fastest rate of force in the shortest possible time frame not maximal force in a slow matter here like this. That's what like maximal strength and absolute strength is. It's moving very slow. It's, it's maximum muscle contraction, but it's moving very, very, very slow in here like this over a longer period of time. We want to create, we want to create a high rate of force in a shortest possible time frame. Okay, so if you use too much resistance, you might find yourself trying to muscle into the technique and going too slow. Um, you might find yourself having to change, uh, you may start getting out of form in here like that. That would give you an indicator that the, that the band resistance is too much. Okay, so you might be able to produce force. Let's say the bands have a lot of resistance. You're trying to produce a lot of force in here, but you change your body position. That means, that tells me that you're, you, you would be, um, you know, you're training yourself to throw a punch in a, in a in bad position in here like this. Okay, you need to be able to stabilize your body, you know, in here like this, you know, and be able to move you know, and catch your weight in here, All right? So using too much resistance, that would be like taking a 16-foot shot put. Now you have the mass to break the window, but you may not be able to throw it far enough to hit the window because you can't get the thing accelerating, okay? So the force and velocity relationship have to match, all right? So too light of bands mean you can't produce force, you don't get the stretch reflex. Too heavy of bands, you can produce force, but it's too slow of force. So you have to find somewhere in between, okay? This concludes this video tutorial on why you need to use bands in order to help you develop the explosive strength and speed strength that you need in order to improve your power for your mixed martial arts striking techniques. If you found this video informative, Please subscribe to my channel, like it, comment, share it with your friends, and don't forget to check out my playlist on martial arts striking techniques, martial arts defensive techniques, martial arts strategies, tactics, and techniques for different types of fighter styles in here. And stay on the lookout for my next video tutorial. Thank you, and take care.